welcome to my YouTube channel, Julia McNeil Crafts. So it's time for another Dawn and Julia Craig. And uh, I set the challenge this time. So Dawn and I both have um, this Stamperia set. The reason I know Dawn had that is I might have enabled her to buy this. So this was a TSV, uh, uh, sorry, a one day special on Hachanda, now the craft store. Um, um, I have good few weeks ago because it had a delayed dispatch on it um, and I bought it and then I messaged Dawn going Dawn have you seen the one day special it accidentally fell in my basket and then 10 minutes later I got a message going yeah it's fallen in mine too so I'll show you the papers in the because it's the same papers in both the um, 12 by 12 and the 8 by 8 these gorgeous steampunk I just knew it'd be up Dawn's street um, and then because I knew we both had it it just had to be done for Dawn and Julia creates so we have got gorgeous gorgeous papers they're just so divine it's like under the sea and steampunk oh and, and a girl she could be a mermaid though couldn't she steampunk mermaid um so we, that's how it came and it also had, came with this stamp set as well so for the Dawn and Julia create I thought we'd do a reverse canvas and I was like yeah we'll do a reverse canvas do you have a canvas Dawn and she found one and then I went thinking I had loads and I didn't have any so I had to go out to the range and buy one which I'm a bit annoyed by because they're cheaper at the works um but yeah I, I, I didn't really want to be waiting time for it to arrive so I've got a canvas here that we're going to do a reverse canvas and um, that's the brief we've got this sheet in the 12 by 12 so it's got this on that side and then the fabulous seahorse on this side which I will be fussy cutting out and I am 99.998% sure that Dawn will do exactly the same thing with the with the um, seahorse so we'll see how that goes then we've got this sheet as well that had all the tags on it which what I thought might create a good bit of interest we can also use the stamps we've got gesso we've got acrylic paint we've got souffle black pen because I always have to have a black pen and any form of texture piece so that's everything that we've got to do this we're to make a medium sized canvas so this is here and also a tiny canvas I do have a tiny canvas in one of my boxes as yet I have not yet looked it out we can also add um, cogs um, cabochons and gems from our stash now I'm going to start off just by painting the edges of this black the other thing I'm then going to do is maybe paint some, um, I've just realised, I've been, as you can tell, I've already, I'm sort of doing multiple, um, recording multiple videos today and quite a lot of them involve uh, black gesso and I thought I'd finished all the, excuse me, thought I'd finished all the black gesso and I've promptly put that, the brush I was using, into um, water but actually I don't want to so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to paint the edges of this with black gesso I loved I've not done a reverse canvas in absolute ages but you've got all this sort of space in here to fill which is fun and um, obviously we've got the staples and things on the outside but especially we're going with a steampunk theme that absolutely works now what I'm going to do is paint this black but I want to be using my papers in here so that's what I'm going to be doing now with the cogs and things normally I would be sort of layering all that in arranging them and then sort of painting everything black and using the texture paste and then my acrylics and all of that sort of jargon um, to get some nice texture and to get everything looking really scrummy but because I want to be putting papers here, I actually really don't want to be covering over. I mean, it's personal preference, but on this occasion, um, actually, I've turned the canvas that way. And now I was originally going to go portrait, and now I've done that. I'm like, oh, I think I might want to go landscape. That'll be interesting to see how we go. Um, so, yeah, I don't particularly want... Um, to be sort of putting the papers down, popping my cogs down and then covering all of that with black paint. So what I am going to do is get my cogs and um, paint them separately with um, the black gesso and um, the texture paste um, and, ha and the acrylic paint and um, sort of have them ready to go as embellishments to stick onto rather than sort of approaching the entire canvas that way so um i am just going to do all of that i'm going to keep painting this um painting my cogs i'm going to be using um the pretty gets gritty 
marble paste. I'm using Pretty, pretty Gets Gritty Black Gesso here. Uh, I'm going to be using her marble paste and I'm going to be using her granite paste and I'm going to pop all of that on two, as I said, the cogs and things. Um, and then when I come back to this, when this is dry, we'll pop the papers on and as I said, we'll use what we have made um, as embellishments. I don't want to put the cogs on just as are because I do sort of want that sort of aged steampunk feel. Um, and I, I don't think I'm going to get that without going through that process of adding the texture paste and painting it up. I'm not going to get the look that I want. Um, it's just going to be too brassy and too shiny um, to leave as is. But obviously, basically all I'm going to be doing is lots of painting things black, which isn't going to be overly interesting. So I will just pop you on fast forward while I do that. it's all dry she says sticking herself finger into wet paint <laughs> right when I had first thought about putting this challenge together I was imagining doing a slightly smaller canvas so this is going to be interesting to see how this actually goes I want this steampunk seahorse as the main feature so I'm going to take that out. So basically, whatever's left of this paper pad <laughs> is kind of what I'm going to be using to decorate the background. So yeah, that's like in my head, I, I was working on a much smaller canvas. So out basically, out of what I choose not to fussy cut here is what we've got left to make the background with. So it's going to be a bit more of a challenge than I was expecting. I'm thinking this little bit here would be good to fussy cut. So I'm going to keep that out. Okay, so we'll take that. Okay, and then possibly the word seahorse as well. Let's take that out. Okay, so basically what we've got left and then the small sheet for the tags is what I'm going to have to create, fill the background with. So I'm thinking, I definitely want it to be going this way. So I quite like this edge. Here. And then I'm going to have to piece together what I've got so I'm thinking I quite like quite like this I'm wasting a lot of paper here to <laughs> probably end up cutting it too short now I'm sat at a funny angle I'm not sure what's going on with my chair there we go so I quite like that hmm yes well that's interesting so I'm thinking I'm probably going to have like my seahorse there-ish and maybe that actually that could maybe go right okay we'll see how we go <laughs> we'll have fun right I'm going to fussy cut this out because I probably will raise this a little bit I think and don't forget we've got our cogs and things they're still dry and they're probably not going to be ready till tomorrow but that's okay I'm just moving the paper, not my scissors, even though it's a sort of a tricky design. We should manage to get around it fairly easily, she says. I love this collection. I'm really looking forward to playing with it a lot more. Well, it wouldn't be challenging. I feel like I've challenged myself. I wonder how Dawn's gone. Hopefully she's been sensible and chosen a much smaller, medium-sized canvas. At least a tiny canvas where we will literally be talking all the leftovers for that. Okay, so I'm going to pop that because I'm thinking that that sort of 
possibly raised about there could be quite nice which means if I do that I can take some of that paper if I need it right I'm just gonna rip and tear what we've got left and see where that ends up taking us I do like that edge so that's kind of how the paper was before so um, let's see <laughs> let's see how we get it working for us so I'm thinking that we have something like, like that I'm going to have the seahorse overlapping that bit so if that doesn't fully get filled in we're okay um, okay 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 do I want the Ooh, see this is the thing with double sided paper quite, I do quite like the writing so let's see what we can do with this I want to add a bit more interest so we can sort of try and break break the colours up a little bit do 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 might just move that over because I kind of almost don't want it as it came if that makes sense and I think we had that sort of mixed it doesn't actually matter if we show a little bit of the canvas because you know we can pop a bit of gesso on and we'll have embellishments and we've got texture paste and souffle and all sorts of things that we can use to just um, disguise things a little bit so I could bring that back for here I kind of could have had it right in the corner but as I said I know that I've got the seahorse going there so um, we don't need to you know if we've got that there we don't have to worry too much we might manage actually what I am going to do is I am just going to steal a bit of this because I do think I really want that sort of raised, raised there. Um, so we may as well be able to use this, this piece here. So we could have that there maybe, like so. And then yeah, I think I'm going to go with that. And then what I will do is all, literally all the little bits that are left. Don't know what we're going to do our mini one <laughs> with. Um, all the little bits that are left, we can patch up um, with that. So let me. I've got my gel medium here. So let's grab that, and we can see how we get on with that. So I'm just going to probably should have saved that a little bit, but ah, we're going with the flow. It's all good. Right, so I'm going to get the gel medium onto the bottom here. And then I would also put some on the back of the paper. So we've just got plenty. And the good thing about using gel medium is that we will have a bit of wiggle room. So we will have time to sort of fiddle and fudge and change our mind. Right, and I'll add a bit of a... paper. This isn't probably going to look like we had it at all. <laughs> That's all good. It's all good. Okay. There we go. Um, I think I would ooh, quite like to break that up with a little bit of a little bit of blue. I'm just going to, I don't want harsh edges. So I'm going to tear that again, even though it means it's a tiny little strip. So this page was already sort of collaged together, so you can sort of take it and move it around and it's all going to work. Right, so we, I know I've got this as a bottom piece. 
So we can pop that down. But what I'll do is I'll not get the glue all the way to the top. And we'll see how we go. I have just finished it. You've probably seen, well, if you follow my channel, um, you might have seen it. But um, because I know that I'm going to be using soufflés later on, I finally got around to swatching my soufflés. So they're just sitting in the corner drying. So hopefully this will have to dry overnight as well. Hopefully by the time we're getting to the stage where we're using soufflés with this, I'll be able to make a much more informed choice because I've actually got round to properly swatching them out. Which is wonderful. I've, had, I've honestly, you should see the state of my space right now. I have fully filmed. Let me see. I've done one, two, three. I've got three completed videos, um, and I have got um, one, two, three videos that I'm filming simultaneously as I'm doing this one. So it's been a busy day and the floor is covered in, I think this is my big tip if you're doing mixed media, is don't just sit there and work on one project because what you tend to find is this will get to the stage where you need to leave it to dry and it really is best to let it dry naturally but if we're busy working on a project we're desperate just to just to see, just to get on with it. Um, we really, really want to just get on with it. I'm just going to grab a bit of um, cardboard so that I can raise that slightly. Um, hopefully I can just... Oh yeah, it's just behind me. Don't need to stop the camera. It's fabulous, she says, taking me just picking a piece. It's like, oh, which bit of cardboard should I use? <laughs> decisions, decisions. Um, yeah, so what was I saying? So like with mixed media, you do get the best results if you let things dry naturally. I mean, I'm the world's worst. I do take the heat gun to things, especially if I'm working on a journal page. But if you are going to be doing some mixed media, I would honestly just take take an afternoon or a day aside and think, right, that's it. And then you can get lots of bits. I've got something that's been gessoed and got um, stuff with gel medium on it waiting for it to dry so that's not going to be ready till the morning I've got my um, I've got my swatching that's going to take till the morning so that's all just sitting there as well um, I've got this drying I'm sure I've got another bit of gesso drying somewhere but yeah so I've kind of I've had a lovely day I've had a very productive day I've got loads done um, but it does mean you're not you've not got that um need to have to I want that a bit higher so I'm gonna put a bit more cardboard on there. Um, so that is a, a a recommend a top tip there that if you are doing mixed media I would sort of be working even if like um you don't know where you're going with any of it but it's just you've got things that you know would need gessoed or stick together or this is obviously it's also quite a good thing to do. You know when you get days of lost mojo and you really don't know what you want to do. Um, just get a load of canvases out. Get just get some stuff prepped and gessoed. Stuff stuck down, because um, you're not at the finishing stage then, are you? You're just sort of like building things up. It doesn't really matter. Um, and so it takes that sort of pressure off to create a finished, a finished piece. Right, I'm piling up this cardboard here. That I want this is the joy of doing a reversed canvas is that we can get some really cool dimension going on um because we've got this we've got the depth of the fact that we're, we're using the back of the canvas now that's showing a little bit of the cardboard but you know I'm really not that bothered because I think it's all going to go and work with the overall effect so I'm going to just pop that there Oops. So we've got that there going on now. That's good. Right, let me have a little look. I've got a few of these random strips. I would have preferred that to have had a torn edge, but it does, it's not going to. That's fine. We can we can gesso. There we go. We can gesso that. So now I'm just 
get, I mean, you can see what tiny scraps I'm using, and I'm just um, overlaying it all together, making a bit of a patchwork mess. Um, and we're hopefully going to manage to fill this space absolutely fine. much torn edge as possible so it's nice and organic. <laughs> I said I don't need to worry too much about this gap in the middle because we will have our seahorse. I think I've already said that I don't know how many times but I'll get it out just to give myself an idea. So if we've got that then you know we're just maybe even this little bit in the middle filled. As I said, I have no idea. I'll pull my little, um, I can see if my little canvas is drying and then if there are any scraps left I'll just stick that in while I'm at it. <laughs> but the, the little canvas probably would take one of the tags absolutely fine so we'll be alright. Right, I want a bit of blue to break this up I think. So this is um, great for like, um, do you know what I mean? I'm not going to be left with any scraps because I'm literally using anything. I think when you're doing this sort of thing, you can. It's a great way of using using scraps and things. I'm just going to tear that side as well because, as we've already seen, we have a bit of it that's curling up a little bit, which is quite interesting. Just the way the gel medium's taking it. Let's see if I can push it down a little bit. But if not, it adds interesting shape and movement. Right. Move that down. And I am putting the gel medium on both the um, under and upper side um, of this um, just to get a good adhesion. Um, but I will probably knock this back with some form of gesso, most likely clear gesso, because as I said at the beginning, I'm not. I didn't really want to be hiding this paper, um, so that's why I've done my um, cogs and things separately. I mean, I might um, do a little bit just to sort of tie it together somewhat, but I'm not going to overly um, be worried about it because um, I, I really want to. I really want, this paper is so beautiful that I really just want it seen. <laughs> Actually, that might go down there. Let's see if I can get that in there. Get my hands in there. Get the old fingers in. There we go. See, no need to panic. Certainly, I think, oh my goodness, that's not going to be nearly as much paper as I wanted. But yeah, the satisfaction I'm going to probably have used <laughs> the entire piece of paper and have no leftovers. That feels nice and satisfying. Right, I'm going to put a little bit of that just here, just to sort of break that up a little bit, make it a bit more interesting. So it's like we've taken a beautifully collaged sheet of paper, ripped it up and collaged it ourselves. That's alright. It's all good. Right, I'm going to tear that. Okay. You could if you wanted. I don't know whether I will. Um, I'm say we don't have any watercolour mediums. I've only got acrylic, but I could water it down quite a bit. But you could if you wanted um, go around all of these edges that we've created and emphasise them with a bit of shadowing. So we may do that, let like me see my seahorse. So yeah, I think we're pretty good to go to be honest. Um, just, just put a bit more in just in case. Oops, squeaky chair. Right, so, I'm just Putting that there because I can. I've got the I've got the paper left to do it, so I may as well. 
that's the sum total and the thought of that. Right, I'm going to leave that as is because if need be I can always pop it in with a tag and as I said I'm pretty sure that that's going to go there so I think we've got everything covered. So what I am going to do now though is I'm just going to pull my little mini canvas in and we'll get the scraps put into there and then I will, well a couple of seconds for you, but uh, morning for me. We'll uh, carry on with it, but I'll just be back in a second with the little mini canvas. I actually just noticed, as I'm looking overhead, that looks fine. But then when I lifted it up to an angle where I can see it, I can still see gaps along there. Um, that will bother me if it ends up you know, going on a wall. So I'm actually going to fill those bits first before thinking of my little canvas. So I've got a few bits left, so I'm just going to pop those down in there. As I said, I couldn't see them looking overhead, but I could see the gap when I had tilted the canvas a little bit. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to solve that. I don't know that we're going to have much scraps left for the mini canvas. We can see. If not, we've got the little tags and things. Um, and there'll probably be a few more scraps once I've properly fussy cut that seahorse out. I've just sort of very loosely cut it out at the minute. Um, so we will have a few more scraps before we're at the stage where we need to panic. <laughs> Pull that. I need to move that a bit more. Come on. So yeah, I'm going to kind of keep going with that. I'm definitely going to need to put. You can't see that. See that? It's just a gap just there. So yeah, I'll keep working away at that. Unfortunately, the angle I need to go to work on it. Um, it's not good for the camera. So I'll just I'll just work on it and then I'll come back. Okay, so here's my mini canvas that I have left. <laughs> um, so I have cut my seahorse out properly. Um, we can still see gaps, but as I said, we've got cogs and other things that we can hopefully um, use. So I'm trying to decide whether to try and piece together these, let's just go for it. I was trying to decide whether to piece together all of these scraps or whether to try and use one of those tags. But I can piece together the scraps. If it doesn't work, we can stick a tag over it, that's not a problem. So I'm just gonna pop some gel medium and down all of that. And then we'll just get everything stuck down. And um, see how it goes. See how we get on there. Put that down. Okay. So I'm literally just picking up, picking up the scraps that we have on the desk and getting them stuck into here. As you can see, there's absolutely no thought going into this at all. So no overthinking. We're just sticking it down. Um, that's my daughter getting very excited. She's watching the new adventures of Superman and. Uh, the episode's called uh, On Death Row because I think Lois has been accused of murder, so. <laughs> so it's getting all very dramatic. I have to say I'm quite enjoying watching them as well, so I'll end up probably having to catch up on that episode on my own sometime. <laughs> right, so we're getting there with this. We are really, really dealing with the tiniest <laughs> The tiniest scraps. This definitely, definitely, this is a, a um, how to use your scraps uh, going on here, isn't it? <laughs> right. I'm just gonna stick it all in. I don't know that we're gonna cover it all, but if we don't, we don't. Um, it is what it is. Right. In there. La la la. I have no idea what this even looks like. There's that much gel medium over it that it's like I can't actually see. <laughs> I can't actually see what we've got. I'm still tearing it just because I just think the torn edge, when you're doing this sort of thing, that torn edge going into a torn edge seems to look a bit more seamless than a straight edge going into it. 
Oh dear, I wonder how small scrap, what small scraps Dawn, I wonder if Dawn's like this, I wonder if Dawn's sitting here with the absolute tiniest amount of scraps trying to piece it together to make it work. <laughs> or whether it's just me that's crazy enough to do that. And there we go, we've got that bit of cut out that's got that funny shape to it. Let's stick it in, why not? Worst that can happen is we might have to go over it all with gesso. That would not be the end of the world. If nothing else, it'll be texture. Right. So, there we go. It's all filled. <laughs> what it looks like, I don't know, but it is all filled. Right, so I will be back in a few seconds for you, uh, probably tomorrow for me. Okay, so this is all dry, as is this. And do you know what? This was meant to be a separate being. But now I'm thinking I kind of want to incorporate it into the main thing. Would that be naughty? I mean, I didn't... I, oh, I'll, have to, I'll have to look to see how I worded it, see if I can get away with it. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop some clear gesso on this just so that we can add a little bit of colour um, with our acrylic paints and just to take the sheen off it. But it was the best way of getting everything all stuck down. I've also realised that I mentioned about using the stamps, but I didn't. I didn't specify with regards to um, what to stamp on, so I didn't say whether we were allowed extra paper or not. So I don't know if we are. I reckon Dawn will do it as close to the brief as possible, so she's probably done it without adding extra paper. Um, so I'll try not to. <laughs> and I also never said about ink, but I'm presuming that if she, she realised that if I said that we're using stamps, then that means that we have to use ink. <laughs> so that's the premise I'm going to go on. So I'm just giving this a really good coating with um, clear gesso, and that is just to, to give it a little bit of a tooth um, for when I start to paint. We are using acrylic, so it would go over it anyway, but it's just, I want to, if I'm using acrylics on this part, I would want it watered down um, because um, I, I don't want to lose the detail of the paper. Um, I think I'm going to um, paint up my embellishments first and see how they look in situ. I don't need to put any on the frame. I do think sort of putting that these are, the, these are the elements I've got left my um I've just literally given my um cogs and things a little coat of gesso so we'd have I think something like that could look could look quite good but I don't know if that's naughty is that naughty probably but do you know what What's the worst that can happen? I'll get stuck on the naughty stick. Practically live there anyway. See, look, we could have the seahorse. Oh, look. Oh, we could have the seahorse sentiment framed. Ooh, there's an idea. Anywho, <laughs> I'm going to let that layer of gesso dry whilst I try and decide if I'm going to be good or not. I'm just going to pop a bit of gesso in here just in case I don't go with that idea, but right now it's really appealing to me. Um, so it was to make a main canvas and a, and a tiny canvas. So I will, what I will do is I'll, I, will, I will stick to that. I will make my tiny canvas separately. I mean, I may or may not stick it at the end. I might just place it and then show it separate. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see where we go. So anyway, that's me done that and then I'll come back and we'll paint some embellishments okay, together. So I've just popped myself out a little bit of paint. I'm using Pebio just because it's what I've got. Um, I I think it was on um, Hobbycraft. They had the entire set on sale at one point and I bought it. So I've tried to go for colours that match the papers. So again, because we've gone for this patina look, we've got those gorgeous teals along with the rust colours. So I have used um, two teal colours. So we've got um, turquoise blue and then iridescent green blue. And the reason I put both is because I wanted the iridescence as well. Um, and also this has got an iridescence to it as well. This, this is the iridescent green yellow and then I have got um, the gold as well. So those three are to help to give me the shine. 
um, and then to build the rust colours we've got these so I have got um, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, um, red ochre and um, naphtaline carmine. So those are the colours there and I'm just going to gradually build these up onto um, my cogs. So these cogs have had um, a little bit of the marble paste on um, and they've had, I'm going to go with my rust colours first, and they've had um, a little bit of um, black gesso. The black gesso is still a little bit wet because it's not that long ago since I did it, but if it all merges together that's really not a problem. So I'm going to build this up and I'm going to try and get, as I said, my rust colours down first. So I'm going with the lightest ones. These will go through a phase of, uh, what have you done? Um, and just remember that that's okay. <laughs> that's absolutely okay. It will gradually build up and become a thing of beauty. But no matter who you are, no matter what you're doing, you will find that um, things will hit a stage where you go, oh, yes everything hits an ugly stage and that's okay. So I'm just um, gradually going to stipple it. The little cogs that I've covered in um, gesso, I'll probably put some that have non-covered into the project as well, but I like some that sort of match as well. So normally I would, you know, stick all of these to a project and then do a whole load of dry brushing, but as I said, because I wanted to maintain the integrity of the papers and to see the papers, I decided to um, do them separately. So we're going in here and again I'm just going to add some of this colour to um, this. I don't know whether I might need a drying time in between them to get a, a better, you know, I'm going to maybe go with my rust tones first and either, I might blast it with heat gun because all that will happen is that we'll get a bit of extra texture. So I'm going to sort of add in these sort of more deeper colours now. So when you first put that on it's like oh that's a hideous colour but that's fine. <laughs> you just remember building it up slowly is the secret. So possibly I should have used a stippling brush for this but you know we've not. I'm not necessarily just going over the yellow bits as well. I'm going to take some of the bits that don't have the, the yellow on it yet and again that's just going to help to create tonal value. So again this is another way of, as you know I bang on about it all the time and I'm sorry if it's annoying for you but it really does make a difference to your artwork is to think about tonal value. I'm not saying, I mean light theory is amazing and if, you, if you're if you interested in it then go for it, learn about it, it does make a difference. You don't need to, you don't need to stress about it. If in general you've got a highlight, a mid-tone and a shadow area then it's going to look good and there's no way a project like this is going to fully follow light source anyway because I'm busy doing this. I don't know what order these cogs are going to go in so they're most likely going to break it. There'll be shadow on one area on one side of it and then you know if you were to follow the technical terms of it like for example if this was over this then this bit here should be darker underneath it and but by the way I've coloured it it might not end up looking like that that's absolutely fine just the fact you've got the various tones in there will sort of naturally give it a more dimensional look so don't stress about it just try and get a few different um, colours and then I'm going to try see what this bright red is like. I wasn't sure it's just in the papers they had a brighter red. Now um, any pa paints that get left over I would just sort of paint them into a page in my journal. I realise I'm working on plastic, I don't throw it in the bin. Um, this will eventually become a journal page at some point um, or texture in a journal page so um, yeah I am although it's like um, might not seem the most environmentally friendly I'm not putting it in the bin it's not going anywhere so I'm hoping that that makes it okay <laughs> so I'm gonna I've got all that the little bits of red are quite good I quite like little touches of it but I might go over it again with with them um, some of the darker the darker rusts and things I'm working blind down here because I can't actually see how it actually looks on the cogs <laughs> 
in. I'm going to start mixing a bit of the yellow the ochre in again to lighten some of it. Not on all of them. Maybe some of these ones that have ended up looking very red will lighten that up a little bit. Right, what I'm going to do is give this a blast with my heat gun. Because the other thing is this project is going to need some over, more overnight drying. We're only on Tuesday though, so for me I'm quite in advance. And I've actually spent the day recording yesterday, so I have a good few videos. So I'm trying to get myself sort of in advance a little bit. Um, so that I can sort of provide regular content even when life gets busy. It seems to be at the end of the month things get busy. I've got like my shows on a chand up being at the end of the month recently and then obviously I do my release at the end of a month so it does seem to be when I'm most busy. So those tones have gone quite rich. It could maybe do with having a bit more of the yellow ochre in there before I start going with the teals. So I might try that but I'm just going to dry it off. As I said I'm not too worried about the fact that I'm blasting this with the heat gun. Acrylic will bubble under the heat gun but I mean I've got texture paste on there because I wanted texture so I think you know the, a little bit of bubbling it's just going to add to the feel of it in this case. And that's why it's good to sort of know your products because if you know you'd sort of read the instructions it'll most likely say don't heat with the heat gun and that's why because it'll bubble. But if you know it's going to bubble and you want bubbling then we're all good to go. Right, so I've got those. Yeah, I think some of them I'm just going to add a little bit more of the yellow into parts. This is why it's sort of good to sort of dry between layers because as it's wet, it's all going to mix into each other, but as it's dry, it'll sit on top, especially with it being acrylic. And that's the, uh, that's the advantage of doing these sort of things with an acrylic based product um, is it's not going to move what you've put underneath is not going to move whereas when we use a water based product we've always got that risk. Now at this stage I'm going to go in with a bit of the gold as well similar to the yellow ochre but obviously it's got that sheen so this is sort of where we get this idea that there is a precious metal under all of that rust it's just trying its best to peek through a little bit. <laughs> so I'm going to pop some of that on and then we'll look at trying to create a patina by getting those blues in. So there's loads of different products that you can buy on the market and you get you can get patina pastes and stuff like that and I've seen them um, but I've never bought them and I'm not knocking them because I'm sure they're absolutely fantastic. I just know the amount of time that I would create a patina effect um, wouldn't warrant me buying one of those and I'd probably buy it, have great fun with it. And then the next time I pull it out, it would be all dried up. So for me, it doesn't really work. But that doesn't mean we can't create patina effects. So I've got like a, as I said, marble paste. So I've, I've still managed to build up texture. Um, and I, you, as long as you've got the colours, the rust colours and the teal colours and possibly a little bit of white, that's you got your patina effect. You can create a patina effect yourself. Um, I think I did a video ages and ages ago, if I can remember when I actually upload this. Because um, the thing is, I say it as I'm talking and then, you know, you go through the editing process and then you upload it. Whether you remember, remember by the end of that, I'll have to see if I can find it. But I think I looked at different, I had some Samantha K um, cogs and I looked at different ways of colouring them and creating patina effects. So I did some with paints like this, but I also did some with um, nail varnish. And actually the nail varnish ones turned out to be the best. This has got a bit of a skin on it, um, just because of the way it, the gesso sat on it, but I actually think that could work. So I'm going to leave it because as I said, as I get, I'm just going to lift these just um, so, to not get the skin too much. I'm going to actually change my brush, so I'm going to keep that brush, because if I dip that in water, it's, um, I'm going to water the paints down and I don't really want to do that at this point. Um, so I'm just kind of going to have a brush per, col per colour tones. I'm going to get a little bit of the blue in there uh, and we can decide, you can decide whether you want it heavily, heavily patinaed with loads of blue or just a touch of it. So I'll probably do some that have got loads and some that have just got a tiny little bit. That's the doorbell gone. I'm really hoping that it's um, stock for my next show. I'm hoping it's a big box of goodies. I would say what I'm hoping it is, but then that would be telling. <laughs> or it might be Kezia's Lego. 
she'll be more excited. It could be something for mummy. Oh, poor thing. She's going to she's excited because she thought it was going to be her Lego. Right, so I need to, I've gone quite heavy on that one, so I'm just going to go not as much on this one. Is my it's my stock. That's good. It means I can parcel that up and get it to the girls later today. Right. So look at that. It's amazing. A little bit of paint. It's amazing. There's not much skill required here, you know. So it is completely achievable for everyone. All I have done is literally got a brush and stippled it onto a thing absolutely fine right so I'm gonna get some of the iridescent on there as well just to because I, I just quite like the having a bit of extra sparkle so I've got that oh I'm liking these look so good okay and then I'm just gonna put a little bit of that green on this I love this green it's um, an iridescent green but it, it almost looks gold in some lights and that's why I think it's perfect for doing these patina things because it's the green gold has got the you know the um that sort of as I said basically these were all sort of a precious metal and now they've rusted over so I do sort of quite like it to have look how good do they look they look so rusty you would genuinely think that was an old rusty cog not a piece of MDF with a few bits of paint thrown at it brilliant love it I love mixed media I love the fact that you can take you can take something you know like ugly cardboard and make it um make it something really precious and shiny and blingy or you can take something that's sort of um you know looks really plain like MDF and now these look like old cogs that like I've managed to get at the in a junkyard brilliant Okay, so let's give that a waft. And then the last thing I do is just get a little bit where the oxidization happens. So if you think about your um, oxide um, ink pads, when you start splashing with water, you know, you sort of get that white, you get that chalkiness, and that is part of the oxidization process. Now, obviously, when patina, when you've got this rust, and when we start getting the, the look, that patina look, it's because the oxidized oxidization process has taken place so having a tiny bit of white just again helps to emphasize that so I'm just giving that all of a waft just to dry that off a little bit oh they look so good I'm so happy <laughs> if there was a dodgy edit there I am sorry um, my camera decided to run out of the batteries so finally I'm just getting a tiny bit of gesso and oops, I'm just going to add some of that. I don't want that too much. I've gone a bit heavy there, but that's fine because we can go back over with colour. I just want a few little stipples of white in certain areas. I like the way this one's gone. It's a bit too heavy handed on that one, but we'll fix that in a second. So while I've got about just the right amount on the brush, I clearly just needed a very, very tiny amount on there. I'm just going to get those done. There we go. Right. So I'm just going to go back in with a bit more colour here just to sort of correct, correct that a little bit. There we go. All good. So just before I tidy away these paints, just move that to the side like so and I'm going to bring in my canvas so I'm going to pop it I know I'm working in it sideways but let me see probably should get it the right way so I get an idea of how we're looking <laughs> okay so I'll pop that in there and then I'm going to take my brushes and just We'll do a little bit of 
dry brushing on this as well. Again, I'm just going to build up those rust colours. I'm getting to miss the stage where these brushes really should be going into water because obviously you don't want to wreck your brushes, but at the same time, I don't. I re it's called dry brushing for a reason. I don't want a wet brush, so I'm just going to get some of these. Oh, I like that. And a flick. It just allows me to catch the edge of the frame doing that. So I'm working very fast on that bit there. It's just catching the edge of the frame and I'm just um, pulling that over. It might get some, some deeper areas. So this is where all, we're working with the reverse of the canvas and we've got all those staples and things. But actually when you're doing the likes of steampunk and stuff, it really works. You know, if you were wanting to do something pretty and floral, you might want to do something a bit more about disguising that, but I actually want to expose it and make the most of it. Um, because I think as a, a rusted element, it looks good. I'm getting some of that gold on there. Um, and I might actually, depending on how we go, I might sort of try and get a bit of texture paste on that a bit later. I'm focusing in on the corners, these two corners, and getting a bit more colour on those, and then having the colour a bit more subtle around the rest of it. Don't know why, but that's just just what came to me. Okay, so there we go. Got the golds down. I'm going to get some of these blues down as well. So yeah, sort of focusing more in the corner areas. And again, that's partly to do with um, your brain. It, it reads from left to right, so it's kind of like if it comes on here, it bounces it here, and then it takes it down here. We're also sort of creating that Z formation that allows the brain to move evenly down your project. It's funny, we all naturally do um, or like those sort of things. So I know Dawn, um, she says that um, she has a, a way of doing things and she's, she just likes it. And it is true that she just likes it. Um, but she always finds herself doing things on a diagonal. And she'll either have embellishments sort of going out with the diagonal or the embellishments in the diagonal. And it's the way she works and the way she likes it. But then if you break that down, if you've got a diagonal there with all your embellishments highly either side, what you've done is create that Z. So you might not feel that, you, that you're doing it, um, but we are naturally drawn to that um, formation. And that is quite often why we find ourselves doing things certain ways. We don't know why we do it, but we just do it because we like it. And we like it because our brain, it's just the way our brain works. So it makes us happy. So you might be doing all these things, you just don't know yet you're doing them. So that's it, so don't worry about it. Just do things because you like it and enjoy it. And you'll quite often find that without realizing it, you're sort of naturally going to that. It's like the rule of three. Most people like things in uneven numbers and they do it that way because they like it. And then all of a sudden you're like, ah, oh, that's why. Right, that's looking, it's amazing the difference a bit of color on that makes. Oh, so good. Right, um, I like, but um, it's all become a bit, let's try the gesso. See if that's enough to sort of, it's a bit shiny, but it's all right. I'm just gonna try getting the gesso on. And then I think we're heading, we're going to meet my mum for a walk, which sounds lovely, but it's also ridiculous because we're obviously with it being still lockdown life or like very, very small easing of restrictions. We are allowed to meet outside now 
before we could but only with one person so I can actually see my mum and, and my dad <laughs> but now we were able to do it but it's snowing you know it's spring holidays and it's snowing so we're off to go to the woods and have a picnic have some soup in the snow <laughs> so there you go right so we've knocked that back that looks quite good now I'm wondering whether I've got time to try and just arrange look, some of these because I will need to use my gel medium and of course that is going to require further drying time so um, it would be handy if we could do that so this is the thing I think I was I can't remember what project I was seen on it but I'm currently working on like lots of videos and lots of sort of mixed media projects at the same time um, and this is why it's maybe a good idea to do that because um, it, various stages require drying time so it's handy to if you're working on this see what I'll do now is like gel medium this down and give it time to dry and do its thing um, I might have to make myself some more cogs because it would be cool to have some along the front as well actually. So I like the way that's looking in the background. I definitely think I need some more cogs but I'll do that separately. Look, look at my page. I mean, don't worry that you're wasting it. How cool does that look? dimension all the bits and pieces on that I like that a lot so let's get that stuck down as is as I said this will come here I still feel that possibly with my small canvas I could have that in there I think that would be quite cool I don't think it's cheating too much <laughs> I just really want to do it. Please let me. Right, so I am going to... Let's gel medium that down. And then when we come back, I'll possibly raise that up in a bit of cardboard. We'll make, I will make some more cogs. Um, and just to sort of maybe embellish the outside of this a bit more. Um, but I'll do that with you. But we'll, well, yeah. Let's stop faffing, Julia. And just get on with it. <laughs> I'm going to get these brushes in water before I destroy them. And then I need to go and get it changed. Oh look, see talking of destroyed brushes, there's one that I used on gel medium yesterday and failed to put in water. <laughs> okay, so let's get some of the old gel medium. See, see when you get brushes like this that like I've clearly ruined because I've just stuck it in gel medium and left it. And I'm just going to continue using it as a stick right now um, to get these pieces down. Um, but don't throw it away because that in itself is a mixed media project. You know, this is what you do with your brushes that turn into sticks. You stick them on a canvas and make them pretty, so it's fine. Don't worry about it overly. <laughs> so I'll get all of this stuck down. I may add some extra colour to this, like I might sort of really water down one of those paints and we'll get a bit of shadowing going on um, with this. At the minute, we will leave it as such. Right. And as I said, I probably will get some cogs that haven't had the old patina treatment. But um, just to add a bit of contrast to the matter. So Dawn has already set the challenge. I've got it. Um, for the next one so if I am naughty I know that the next one might not be too bad <laughs> but the one after that she might make me pay for it but I'm highly tempted see I don't think it's going to break it that much I, I'm going to have to check to see how I worded it as to whether I mean, probably yeah I'd probably say we're making two I'm going to see how I worded it I'm going to try my best to get away with it because I really want to do it I might just do it anyway I'm going to call it uh, what do they call it creative license it's 
like when filmmakers don't stick to the story in a book. They don't do exactly the same as the book. It's called Creative Licence. And how many of the best lines on films have been from, um, you know, what do you call it? People just ad libbing. It's like the bit in Star Wars when she's like, I love you. And he goes, I know. That, that wasn't in the script. He just ad libbed. Anywho, <laughs> that's that all stuck down with gel medium. So hopefully by this evening, it'll be, it won't be fully adhered, but hopefully it'll be strong enough that I can uh, get on to the next stage. And yeah, we will come back and do a bit more in there. Okay, so I've just finished painting up a few of the um, more cogs. Um, and while they're finishing off drying I'm just going to see about adding a little bit of shadowing because I've had the paints out to do the um, cogs so before that all dries I'm going to just try so it's the same colours that I was using but I'm going to really try and water it down a fair bit and I'm just looking at getting a little bit of shadowing behind this. So in a minute I'm going for the rusty colours. I might add a bit of blue, I don't know. But we'll just see how we go. That's ended up way too yellow. Don't like that. But the advantage is we are going really, really watery. So we can fix that. And we are allowed gesso, so if all else fails, we can add gesso to the mix but it's just I'm really wanting to sort of emphasize emphasize these areas where the cogs are bring it all together so what I may do is my usual that um, the reason why I put shadowing in is it will bring it together it adds depth um, because everything in life has a shadow so the fact that we're emphasizing that shadow will just add a lot more depth um, to it but it can be a little bit of a slow process especially as I'm sort of going with well it's not watercolors it's acrylic but as soon as I'm highly highly watering these down to build up the color slowly it may just take a little moment to do So that works quite well. Putting it on a bit heavier like that. So if I pop it on a bit heavier and then just get some water in there. And I'm holding it up because I'm hoping that we will get yeah, a little bit of drippage going on as well. So um, I think I'll probably, I don't know that I'll do it around all the cogs, but I think along the top here in the corner just to emphasise some of those shadows, which we try putting a bit of blue in. Just want to see what happens when we pop a bit of blue into the, well like, yeah because we've got the blues in the paper as well. That works pretty well as a shadow colour actually. And obviously it is, with the seahorse, it is a bit of an under the sea theme. So I'm liking the way that's looking. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll pop you on fast forward as I continue to play with this one. Where we are at the minute, I ended up adding a bit of extra paint to there because we're not really going to see that when the seahorse is there. But if we do end up getting a side view, the fact I've filled it in with a bit of colour looks okay. So I've not used the stamps yet, which was part of the brief. Now, had this not been part of a challenge and where I am right now, sorry for that noise, I would be wanting to get this script stamp and do some embossing. I would also love to be getting my frantage out, um, but. I don't have any. Well, it wasn't on the list. Um, 
but I do have the souffle, so we might be able to get a similar effect. But what I'm thinking is I would quite like some, I would have liked some script embossing, um, sort of here and here. So obviously I can't do that, but we do have the paint. So what I'm going to do is grab some of the gold and I'm going to stamp with the paint um, because it's the closest to the gold, gold embossing that I will be able to get. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint that out like so and to almost create like an ink pad. I will need to wash my stamp straight away after doing this because um, sticking your stamp in acrylic paint and then leaving it is one sure way to wreck it. So don't do that. So I've got that nice and juicy and I'm just going to grab my stamp and stick it into the paint and then I want some script coming off of here. Oh, like, I like, I like, I like. And it means I've now also used the script stamp. So I've now used everything that was in the brief. I'm gonna put the stamping up there as well. And then what you can do is we can just re Rebrush that so it's nice and flat, and then I want a little bit of it stamping in this corner as well, and just bring it, bring it down. But yeah, I do think the script, just as I said, what I would have liked to have done is had that with um, gold embossing powder, so it was slightly raised as well. But I'm working within the remit that I can. Um, so yeah, off to wash this now and then we will pop some other bits um, together and see where so we are then. These are my extra cogs that I have done. So I'm going to get all of this um, stuck down. My, if there's any noise in the background, my daughter's um, reading herself a bedtime story with great gusto. I've got lots of expression going on there, but it's brilliant, I love it. So I'm going to stick that there and then we'll pop this along here and then we'll have our fabulous seahorse just sitting on there so let's get a bit of gel medium I'm not quite sure where we're sticking this bit's gonna definitely gonna there we go so as I said we will have to leave this overnight again but this is currently Thursday night so you know for once I mean, Dawn's probably got hers up and it's been scheduled for like two weeks. But, you know, for me, I'm doing all right. I'm add a few. Oops, got that on the wrong way. I've put my glue on the wrong side. Right. So let's get some of these. And I'm just going to add some extra cogs and things to the outside of this. helps to build up. Oops. Right. There we go. Oops. It's all rocking a little bit. It's because it's going to really need to set, but it's fine. We'll 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 go with it at the minute. It was just to sort of make the frame just as interesting as what's going on inside. Right, um, as tempted as I am to cheat and put that, I still really, really want that there. But I'm just wondering whether I might just put, I might be good and just put the sentiment in and do something properly with that like I should be. <laughs> Okay, so um, what I will do then is let's, um, I, I do feel like I want another, maybe another couple of cogs just going up there. Can't wait to see what Dawn's done. Last week I had to wait, we were at a, we were at a, um, I don't know, some Zoom event. <laughs> so I had to wait. Okay, and um, do I have another one that's painted up? There we go. 
here. I like you. I like you. Right, let's grab my scissors. And I'm just going to put um because I do have a black pen, so I'm just gonna cut this out roughly. grab my black pen so I think I'll have that and then as straight as I can get this unfortunately if not I'm going to have to have a bit of an angle to that but never mind there we go so if I have that there let me get a black pen as soon as I put my black pen around it that will pop so much better and then I will grab my souffle and we will decide and we'll start um, sprinkling that in a few different places and we'll pretty much just be needing to check how this looks in the morning to be honest um, obviously I've still got my little one to do but I'll just do that in a second so if I get that um, it might actually need a little bit of shadowing behind the sentiment um, but uh, things are too delicately balanced right now to be worrying about that, so I might that might be a little job for tomorrow. So, okay. Oops. Okay. So we'll pop that there. And then we'll pop that there. There we go. Okay. I think just put a bigger blob. Might have been better getting cardboard or something. That would have been sensible. There we go. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna add a bit of the souffle now. I have since made out a swatch of um my souffles. Um if you're watching this the day that Don and I put this up. Hopefully this should have been uploaded the day before. So um, I've pulled out the sapphire and the rose quartz. Um, I'm liking this gold. I like. I really like that one as well, the aquamarine. Um, I think it goes quite well. Um, but this uh, sapphire is not my favourite colour. But on black um, it looks very similar to some of the other ones. So it's like my decision is to sort of kind of use this up on darker projects. Um, then that way, plus when it dries, there's a little bit of that sort of blue um, thing, which I think will work really well with the project. And I like this because it really is quite a nice, um, the closest to a rusty gold that there is. So this is the, possibly the fool's gold, but yeah, I think I'm going to go with this this time. Um, this is the advantage of swatching out because I can now put those, actually, yeah, the fool's gold is probably going to go better. So I've changed my mind. I think I'm going to go this one and fool's gold. Um, but that is the advantage of swatching um, is that you can actually pull it out and put it next to your project um, so that you can make an informed choice um, as to um, what you want to do. So I really would um, highly recommend swatching out your products. It does make a difference. Now I know that I like this better on the darker colours and obviously down here we've got lighter colours so it's going to look more blue so I'm going to stick to using this one on the frame um, because that's where I'm going to get it more how I personally like it so I'm just going to pop some just in the corner around here Oops, and I'm so pleased that I did this because as I said this blue I would never have probably bought but it came in it came with other stuff and because it came with other stuff, I liked the rest of it and it was sort of cheaper to get it as a four than to get the three that I actually wanted. Um, so I ended up getting it. But as I said, this is the complete advantage of swatching out because I now know, I'm not putting this on panicking going, oh, that's really, really blue and it's really not my favourite blue and I really don't like it. I'm not panicking because I know 
that that is going to dry mostly gold and it really is going to look quite fantabulous um, with just the tiniest touch of um, blue when it's dry. So, yep, I'm going to get getting that going right here and just sort of building up this corner part of the frame um, so that we've got lots of stuff um, going on. Add a little bit of sparkle to that. And I'll, what I love about these soufflés is it's not just the sparkle, um, but it's the um, texture you get. It's almost like a texture. It's like yeah, it's like a texture piece, but the, with the most gorgeous inclusions in it. Definitely one of my new favorite favorite pro products. So I'm going to get a little bit, and I'm going to stick to the darker areas of this because I know, as I said, I know I, I quite like the way this looks on black. I'm not overly keen about the way it looks on white. So I want to make sure that when I'm putting that down, it's hitting the darker areas. But again, I'm sort of focusing on the cogs and things. So I think that's enough of that one. Um, and then I will grab another brush because I don't want to contaminate my pots. Um, and we'll pop some of this and as I said because I swatched it out I could see this was more of a a rust um, a rust gold I mean it's gold so it's not um, but it's more of an orangey gold so it works well with that rusted look so now I'm kind of I created a frame I built up the corner this side on the outside and now I'm going to build up the corner this side on the inside so we've we've still sort of like framed the project but the fact, and I'm going with two separate colours as well, so as I said, really building up those corners. I might just very, not chunkily, but I might just do like a thin paint of this just on top, just in that top corner, which will give it a delicate, delicate sparkle. But you can tell you can tell that Fool's Gold and um, Opal are my favourite because I've used so much of it already, it's ridiculous. So we'll pop a little bit on the cogs as well. And with the blue that we've already got there, give it a mixture of stuff going on. And this is one of these things that you're not going to see the beauty of it till it's all dry. And then hopefully it's going to look beyond amazing. That's hopefully the plan. If not, there's gesso. <laughs> so I never worry about it overly. Okay. I think, I think I'm quite happy with that as is. Maybe just get a few more sparkles going on up here. Yeah. I think we could be good to go. Right, so I'll pop that to the side. We'll come back to that in the morning. There is a possibility that I might just, well, I've got this out. I'm going to pick bits of the seahorse actually and just give it a loose, not chunky, just I'm going to put it on really thin. So it'll give a bit of a glittery, glittery um, element, but not too overly, overly. Mm -hmm. Add a bit of emphasis to our gorgeous seahorse. There we go. That'll do. This is going to dry really shaped as well. But we might, we'll see how that looks when it's all dry. Okay. I think we're good. She says, keeping faffing and faffing and faffing. So we'll leave this to the side. We'll pick this up in the morning. I will just grab that small little. Um, the little canvas and we'll get that to a similar stage. The most I might be doing in the morning is a, a little bit of shadowing around the sentiment but we'll see how we go. So let's just pop that to the side. Okay. And I'm just going to stretch over because I still have these tags. Um, I've also not done any painting around there. Any dry brushing. 
So let me just grab a brush and we'll see what leftovers we have on this palette. And we'll get that, get that going. Just, just helps it to look a bit more authentic. Mm -hmm. So again, I've got the rust colours that we'll get on first. And this is, um, I would have probably wanted more of the actual, the paler rust colour, but that's kind of run out and I'm not going to be popping more on my palette. We'll just go with what we've got. We'll make it work. Okay, yeah, now let's get a bit of the, a bit of the blue on as well. elements that we could cut out. Um, I've got the seahorse there but I quite like the long tag. Um, oh it's like decisions decisions isn't it? I think I'm going to take possibly two of these tags One that's kind of like on the cleaner side. Like so. And then we could have one that's like like that side. Once again I'm at the stage where I could have done with having more cogs. I've gone through way more cogs than I <laughs> thought I would. <laughs> Ah oh dear, the joys. So we could have like something like that. So I'll pop that in. It's the thing with two sided paper like this, it's so hard to know what side you want to use. Grab my scissors and cut this so that it fits in there. There we go. And then we'll have that one sort of coming off like so. Yeah, I do have some more cogs, but it's just that they've not been painted up. But we can see, see how we're feeling. I quite like that, but those are going to need painted up. So um, I will cover those in gesso. We'll leave that as is. We'll paint these up. And then, um, well, let's get a bit of, oh no. Right. I'm just going to stick them on as is and because I, I kind of want souffle on this as well so let's just we'll stick them on as is what I'll do is I'll just pop that one there and that one's already been aged so we can pop that one up there I think that would be cool and then we'll pop this one here So, and just give that a 
a very thin coat of gesso and then we can always add a bit of colour after the fact if need be and then that just means I can get a bit of the souffle on because otherwise we'll have to wait for that souffle to dry as well and I don't really have the time to be allowing things to dry for ages when I come back to it so I'll just step, I don't mind a bit of it showing anyway, we'll just step a little bit of that on then we can, as I said, we can add a little bit of colour if need be. Okay, so I've got that and then let me grab, I think we'll stick with the fool's gold because we don't have as many dark areas on this one. So I'm just going to load of that in the bottom. it about again I'm going to focus on the corner so that we've got lots of texture in that corner just there and then I might just pop a little bit just on the top of those as well like so there we go Right, so we'll see how that looks in the morning. If there's any, if we're needing to do any tweaks, see. I bet Dawn was watching that thinking, oh, she's going to be on the naughty step, she's going to be on the naughty step, she's going to be on the naughty step. And in the end, I played nice and was good. Right, so I will be back in the morning um, just to finish off. Okay, so this is all dried now. The souffles are nice and dry. That's kind of dried a little bit bluer than I was hoping, but it's fine. It, it works. I don't hate it. So that's good. Um, I just want to maybe add a bit of shadowing around this so that it stands out a bit. And then I also just picked that up and I'm quite tempted just to put that there. Um, I think that could be quite nice. So let me just I'll edge that in black just so that I can get a better idea. It was just sort of lying there. This is this one. I think I'm happy with that. That's probably done. Um, but we're just a bit of shadowing on this one and then we're probably done with this one too so I'm just going to try edging that in black I just think it might add another extra element or detail I do quite like it so I'm just going to go with it let's get a little bit of cardboard and we can just my decent scissors are through in the other room because I've been doing lots of fussy cutting and getting ready to prep for the next craft store show so um yeah I don't have my, my proper scissors that's all right it's all good right I also don't have working glue I can't see the stuff that Donny Don bought me but that's because my um desk is such a ridiculous mess it's because I've been filming about I think I've got well, I've got quite a few things sort of filmed and ready to go now, but I'm still halfway through another... I've got three half-done projects lying around. <laughs> and all the products. See, like, these ones here. This isn't this project. That was a different project that I was working on at the same time. <laughs> uh, the joys. Right, so I'm just going to pop that there. I just think it gives an added little something. Why not? Right. So I've got that um, and then I think I'm going to get some of the rusty colours out. I'll do a bit of shadowing and then I might try and do some gold splashes with the gold acrylic. So I'm going to get some of these ochre colours out and I think some of the um, this one, the non-shiny teal one. go. Right, let's get a re, re uh, filled my paint pot, my paint brush pot. Most of my brushes yesterday were through in the bathroom. They, they'd been washed and they were just drying out. So when you are drying your brushes, it's good to leave them flat. So my little painty rag that I have, I tend to sort of put that out and all my brushes sit on that till they are dry um, because you don't want to be drying your brushes standing up. It damages them. And I do enough damaging of one's brushes without uh, adding to the mix. 
So I'm just going to pop this on quite heavily just to get the shadow there and then I will pull it out with water. So I'll probably put way too much paint down but don't worry I'll, I'll literally just transfer that to a journal page so I don't worry about it overly. Right so I'm just gonna now get some water and just really loosen that so it's not as heavy but hopefully the fact that we've got a bit of darker colour around that that's going to make a difference and the fact that we right at the beginning put clear gesso onto the paper um, that has just sort of allowed us to start throwing mediums at it and not having to worry too much and get a bit of the blue in there as well so that we've got a more patinaed look definitely put out way too much paint <laughs> never mind there sorry lost the ability to talk it's just this is me this is first thing in the morning had my breakfast come through just to finish off a few little things so it's like my um my brain with regards to crafting and talking at the same time just hasn't quite woken up yet yeah that's definitely definitely made a difference so that we can see that centre but a lot more. It's gone a bit grey mixing the blue and brown together. That's alright. It kind of matches the colours of the the um what do you call it? The background. <laughs> brain 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 if only I had one. But yeah. So definitely think that sentiment stands out a lot better now and while as soon as I've got all this paint out what I will do is let's just pop a bit of shadowing down here as well so that that makes sense got somebody creeping into the room right so we've got that right now I'm going to grab the gold one actually pop that out and then what I should do is waft um, this with the old heat gun and um, I'm going to just get some splatters, some gold splatters onto this and we'll clean up the desk and let you see this without all the gubbins surrounding it. Happy though, a few times I felt like I hit a brick wall with this one ages since I've done the reverse canvas. I love having the depth and being able to build a scene within it. I think that's fun. Right. Okay. So I'm just going to get some scraps of paper. Pop that. I, just, I don't want to hit the sentiment so we'll get that there. And I'm going to get this and I'll water that right down so that we can get some nice splashes. Okay, I'm trying to get the consistency right. I want it loose enough that it splatters but um, thick enough that we get really nice gold flecks on the project and then I'm just going to turn it so that we've got splashes going in a more random pattern they've not all got the same angle to them okay so we've got that so we'll take that off and and then I will just um, grab this little one and I'll get some splatters on this one too especially on the frame because we don't have too much going on on the frame here right I will just clear the desk and we'll have a closer look
Okay, so that is the two canvases side by side. I'll just sort of tilt it in a few different ways so you can see it. So that is that, our steampunk seahorse. Um, I absolutely cannot wait to see what Dawn has done. And there's my little diddy one as well. I still think that would have looked quite nice in the centre with the, the hay hole. <laughs> I stuck to the brief. I was a good girl. Um, if you have enjoyed it here, please do consider liking and subscribing. I will be back with more crafty goodness very, very soon. And also, please don't forget to jump on over to Dawn to see how she approached this challenge. She will have knocked it out of the park, as she always does. Um, take care, and I will see you very, very soon. Okay, take care then, and goodbye.